Okay, uh, welcome to the virtual future stage at FutureFest 2018. My name is Kate Devlin, and today I'm joined by Dr. Julia Shaw. Julia is a psychological scientist, and she specializes in memory and criminal psychology. And she has her book, The Memory Illusion, which is an international bestseller and has been translated into 18 languages. And she's also working on a new book that will be out next year. But I also want to talk to her a bit about Spot. And Spot is a bot. And Spot is a bot that is used therapeutically, in a way, um, in order to report um, sexual harassment and discrimination in the workplace. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so Spot is an AI that essentially conducts the perfect memory interview every time. So to link it with my memory science, um, I, as a scientist, I've studied how we misremember important emotional events and how easy it is, especially through bad interviews, to essentially add pieces or to forget pieces that are really important later on when you're turning your memory into evidence. Um, Spot helps employees record and report workplace harassment and discrimination. It's not just for sexual harassment. We're actually specifically trying to broaden the conversation um, because I think there's too much focus on this sort of issue. This is a woman's issue, which I think is really quite divisive. Um, but so, so Spot, what it does is it's a, it's a chat bot that you go to at talktospot.com. It's free. You can go there. It's totally anonymous. We don't keep your data. It's yours and only yours. Um, and what it does is it walks you through an interview called the cognitive interview, which is best practices in memory interviewing, and which is actually the same technique that I train the police and military on to do their job in the best possible way. And so it starts with open-ended questions, follows up with probes, sort of tell me everything you can remember, and then it asks you, you know, you mentioned this where the AI piece comes in. You mentioned your boss, can you tell me more about that? At the end, it walks you through everything, and then it says, okay, now would you like to keep a PDF record for yourself? And this is, I think, the really crucial bit, is what it's doing is it's encouraging you to create a contemporaneous, time-stamped PDF record that you could hold in someone's face, or digitally hold in someone's face, um, and say, hey, look, this is what I remembered at the time. It's not my brain's version three months later, two weeks later, two days later. It's the version at the time, asked in the best possible way, extracted and preserved, and I think this is what excites me, outsourced. I think at this point, I've come across absolutely nothing in neuroscience or in memory science in general that says, here's how to preserve a memory perfectly in your brain. And so this is why I've moved towards AI. Um, and given that there's so many people who want to talk about harassment and discrimination right now, we help them preserve that experience, that emotional experience. And then we also allow, after this, if you want, the ability for you to submit a report, and you can submit this PDF record anonymously to your employer as well. So it's, it's really trying to ease the process, make the best possible evidence, share that with someone, and then also give companies the ability to take action. Well, there's so many nice things about this, this use of AI. And it, it goes way back to sort of 1966 when Joseph Weizenbaum came up with the Eliza bot. Mm -hmm. And Eliza was really interesting because he, he kind of made it as a parody, but he found out that people get really, really attached to it. Oh, it's amazing. So people, uh, like with lots of bots, they tell Spot that they love Spot. Um, they, they'll tell us as well because we ask for feedback. They'll tell us that this is sort of a really in intense, emotional, cathartic experience. Even though, to be honest, we designed Spot to be very practical and neutral. It's specifically not an Eliza bot, yeah. but the same principles of sort of oversharing can apply. We've had people use it for like four or five hours, wow. even though it's just a really straightforward interview. There's, a, there's, that, there's that need for people to assume that level of intelligence, even when it's not really there. It sort of draws them in, doesn't it? And I, I think it's, it's not just that, but I think it's that sometimes we, we sort of assume that you need, quote, a human connection, that you need an empathetic person looking at you, sitting across from you, nodding. I don't think that's true. And that's what Eliza showed as well, right at yeah. the beginning, is you don't need the human connection. People like to just talk. They want someone who can listen. They want someone who will respond, sure, but, or that, rather than who. Um, but they don't necessarily need um, the level of emotional connection that we might assume people need for a good interaction. Yeah, and we see it with we see it a, lot. a lot of the voice assistants today as well. We see people getting quite engaged in conversation with those. I think it's, it's fascinating.